आप गाइस कैसे हो आप लोग सो टुडे विल बी राइडिंग द ऑल न्यू हिमालयन ऑन द डेली देहरादून हाईवे ऑन दिस हाईवे रन दैट वी आर डूइंग टुडे ड्यूरिंग दिस रन आई विल बी शेयरिंग सम ऑफ द फाइनर न्यूएंसेस दैट मोस्ट ऑफ यू हैव बीन आस्किंग मी अबाउट द न्यू हिमालयन एंड द शेरपा 450 इंजन नाउ व्हाई आई हैव ऑलरेडी मेड अ रिव्यू अ डिटेल्ड 30 मिनट रिव्यू ऑन दिस मशीन कवरिंग ऑल द बेसिक्स I feel still there are some things that are missing that you guys have been asking me and I thought I'll be covering them in this longest sort of a ride on the highway. I am also trying to do a full mileage test in terms of what sort of mileage it gives. I actually got the tank full on my previous ride that I did a couple of days back where I went from Haridwar towards Dehradun to Lendor cafe and all. तो बस बस ओवरफ्लो हो गया यार बिल्कुल टॉप तक भर गया सो लेट्स सी हाउ मच माइलेज दिस थिंग गिव्स नाउ एज यू कैन सी फुल द पेट्रोल इज फिल्ड टिल द टॉप नो ऑटो कट ऑफ टू द मैक्स लिमिट वट एवर इट कुड टेक द सेवेंटीन लीटर टैंक इट इज ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड एंड सेवेंटी किलोमीटर वेयर वी फिल्ड अप द पेट्रोल मे बी माइनस वन किलोमीटर और ट्वेल्व सिक्सटी नाइन लेट्स सी वॉट सर ऑफ माइलेज दिस थिंग गिव्स इन नॉर्मल realistic riding scenarios so we are still continuing on the same tank with 1452 on the odo right now we are almost 170 kilometers already done on this himalayan while coming towards uttarakhand side i was riding a little hard trying to test out the revving capabilities of this himalayan while going back i'll be riding in possibly a sedate manner riding in a manner that i normally ride while i'm on wrong tours so this will give you a pretty decent outlook on the touring experience that you can expect from this machine i'll talk about what is the practically maintainable cruising speed on this machine i'll talk about the wind blast a lot of you guys have been asking me about that because this has this small visor and the quality side of things because when any one of you will be wanting to put their money on the royal enfield himalayan specially considering what had happened with the first batch of the himalayan when it was launched it was plagued with a lot of issues i'll you know share my heart out in terms of how this machine feels from a quality standpoint because i think i am eligible to talk about the quality right now i am not coming after just riding this motorcycle maybe like a 100 150 kilometers i have ridden this motorcycle more than a thousand kilometers over the last uh week or so in different terrains in the twisties in the mountains on the highways everywhere okay <laughs> UK riders So here you see me cruising at a relaxed speed on the highway 6 gear 85 88 90 kmph A lot of people kind of talk about the or I should say boast about the speeds at which they cruise they say that they are cruising at a speed of 140 150 kmph specifically the folks uh, who I have a discussion with about this boat cycle and they are owning a KTM 390 adventure these guys say that the 390 adventure can go much faster oh, no doubt that machine can go much faster but how much time do you spend riding at those speeds is the main question uh, which needs to be considered that sort of a speed is maintained maybe at max 15 seconds 20 seconds like you go fast and then you release the throttle and then come back and settle to a maybe like a 90 110 that is where the actual cruising happens on the highway and if you are someone who is into long distance touring and wants to ride the motorcycle for long distances travel the country in a peaceful manner in a manner which is relaxing to you because we, we are not talking about doing 
rides on the motorcycle where you just ride for one long day do 1200 1300 kilometers and boast about it for the rest of your life we are talking about the type of touring that requires to be on the road day in and day out where you do those long 15 16 day road trips every day you are spending maybe like 12 13 hours on the saddle so when you are doing all that stuff you wouldn't be doing 140 150 on a cruise trust you me guys i have ridden enough motorcycles i've seen different types of riders nobody cruises at that speed if they are in for the long haul if they are in to motorcycling for the long game so ultimately what happens is you settle down at the speeds that i am mentioning 90 100 110 max 115 something like that even 120 uh, for matured riders is too much to maintain for like a good 15 20 minutes we don't have those sort of roads by the way and harley going through wow that is where the himalayan actually shines now does it go to 120 kilometers per hour yes absolutely does it go to 130 kilometers per hour yes it does that also does it go 140 150 yes it can also reach those speeds as well but how efficiently it can maintain the cruising speeds if that is the question there is not a semblance of doubt about it it can maintain those speeds very easily see on this highway that i am right now even i was not able to maintain that speed of 100 or 90 kmph because the traffic flow suddenly increases and decreases and the indian highways are just bullshit although the road quality has improved but the driving sense is haywire everyone tends to cut lanes and all 90 100 110 absolutely no issues yes it can go higher provided you want to maintain those sort of speeds that kind of cause a strain that i won't say as easy cruising because it stresses you out it stresses your body and mind you are at any point in time on the highway expecting somebody to pop out from anywhere and whole of your concentration is there in terms of avoiding that scenario while on an easy cruise you are soaking in the views all around and having the time of your life riding the motorcycle so a very subtle difference that requires a mature mindset the 411 was something that felt boring for somebody who likes touring this ain't boring by any sense so that is my final word on the cruising speeds that this machine can maintain and the comfort that it offers <laughs> like you just saw just got a clean stretch so i'm settling now at an 87 90 this is what the road allows <laughs> even if you have a 390 adventure what will you do will you fly over the hyundai venue in front of me right now what will you do see this bullshit guy coming from the wrong side this is one of the biggest reasons that you can't maintain those high speeds that everyone boasts of one other thing that a lot of you have been asking me is the wind blast on this machine don't get me wrong in my experience of riding all these different sort of motorcycles and i have primarily ridden uh, most of the adventure bikes right from the single cylinders to the triple to the four to the gs whatever right so i haven't seen any motorcycle that actually protects you from the wind blast in the perfect manner there are a few motorcycles that have come close in terms of achieving that perfection 1250 gs has a very good windscreen considering the motorcycle itself has a very broad fairing and the way uh, the aerodynamics are you know taken care of on that machine although that front face looks very very broad on the 1250 gs not talking about the 1300 uh, it has one of the best wind protections but that is a different league altogether we are talking about 26 27 lakhs on road the other motorcycle that i feel has very good wind protection and i have had experience riding it was the ducati multistrada 950 excellent wind protection in the stock windscreen that comes with the motorcycle apart from these two i haven't seen any motorcycle kind of offering great wind protection in their stock windshields what you get on the himalayan right now whatever you see in front of you right now is not a windscreen not a touring windscreen by any standard at best i can term it as a visor something very similar to a fly screen that you would maybe install on an interceptor or a continental so 
anything that is coming deflecting from air is directly hitting me in the upper chest area and yeah so you can very well imagine the type of wind protection that is there the touring windscreen that the that is on offer by royal enfield for the new himalayan uh, is a little bit taller and wider it would provide some sort of wind protection but i think whatever height increase that it will offer is going to push all the wind maybe protect the chest but then all the wind will be hitting you direct on the helmet and causing that buffeting trust me guys if you are looking for perfection in terms of wind protection keep your expectations low this is something that is coming from years of riding experience that i'm sharing with you folks who are new to riding kind of thing that i want that perfect windscreen it's very difficult to get that uh, why i say that is because even if you increase the size of the windscreen it will look hideous on your motorcycle it sometimes kind of overpowers the whole front end look see i can get a windscreen as tall as this on the himalayan and say that i am all protected but how will it look it will look ridiculous and it will also vibrate a lot because it is you know mounted at the bottom the upper end whatever material you use will kind of uh, vibrate and create that irritating sort of a noise so there is a reason why these windscreens are you know not made to those extended heights i would say on this machine on the base model without the adventure touring windshield without the accessory windscreen that royal enfield offers this is like a joke uh, something that is there for the aesthetic appeal because you can't obviously imagine a himalayan or an adventure tourer without anything here imagine how it will look with that round headlight and this pod which i feel is very similar to a moto 360 smartwatch that came maybe a decade ago so <laughs> there goes the question that you guys were asking about wind protection i think you can also feel the wind hitting my helmet so i hope that answers your question if you still have any concerns let me know in the comment section i'll try and address them and this is where i'll maybe just go hard and this not necessarily is the cruising speed i am right now at 110 and all right see a guy popping out on the right a guy on the left i don't know when these guys decide to cross the road we don't know anything about the mentality here in on indian roads so you have to be very cautious this is what we do when you want to just wake yourself up or are feeling bored on a long cruise there is something that you just do for a few seconds here and there and have fun that's it effortlessly going till 110 also goes to 120 it's not the bike that is restricting it's just the road that we are on the type of highway we are on which kind of restricts that is where your high speed touring ends <laughs> with loads of truck not filled to capacity but exceeding capacity by maybe 10 times in terms of their ability to carry those sugar canes so you can very well imagine how amazing it is to ride on such highways so there is one more question that i have been getting a lot uh, when i was you know mentioning about the cruising speeds and all a lot of you have asked me how are the vibrations on the motorcycle is it like the new himalayan with the 450 sherpa engine does not have any vibrations at all even when you are doing 110 120 kmph most of you by now understand that this can do 150 as well as i have shown you in one of my previous videos but at 120 120 at 120 130 kmph uh does it have any sort of vibrations or is it like completely vibe free my plain and simple and most importantly honest answer about that is yes 
this machine has vibrations so if you are expecting that you will be doing 120 kilometers per hour with zero vibes on the handlebars and zero vibes on the foot pegs then i think you are expecting too much from a single cylinder what i can tell you and i think this should give you a very fair idea of how things are is when you are doing 110 120 kmph uh the vibes are not something that will deter you or you know kind of uh give you that feel that no i shouldn't ride this hard this motorcycle will fall apart this feels very uncomfortable this is just too vibey those are the feelings that you will definitely not get while riding this machine there are vibes for example right now i am just pushing this 110 and all right there are vibes on the handlebar there are a little bit of vibes on the foot pegs as well i am by the way wearing my proper adv riding shoes full riding gear with those proper riding shoes and rubber pads installed on the foot pegs these vibes are not something that will worry you that's the bottom line i want you to remember if anyone says there are no vibes they are bullshitting if anyone says that there are so much vibes on the himalayan 450 that you can't ride above 100 kmph they are also practically bullshitting the honest truth is that the vibes are something that will be there but not worrisome so remember this thing doing 120 right now it's easy i mean it feels like i can easily take it to 130 as well so that's what i did but is it concerning no not at all you must understand this this essentially still remains a royal enfield engine whatever they may call it the sherpa 450 or the shefford 450 but this still remains a royal enfield engine which will have that a little bit of a vib character of course things have improved drastically over the years with the royal enfield engines things have smoothened out but still i mean you can't compare them to a refinedness that you feel on a single cylinder from a suzuki or a honda so keep that in mind and set your expectations accordingly good clean stretch again and this thing doesn't ask you to back down at those high triple d speeds this says keep me pushing on i'll and i will oblige this is what the chassis the whole himalayan kind of communicates to you when you are pushing it hard and that is what is most important another question that i am being asked about is what is the quality like on the new himalayan now i know there are there is a lot of background story to it with a few years back we saw videos where nuts were flying off from the himalayan while it was you know doing some off roading we saw a video where the chassis completely where the chassis completely broke down on the mure plains or in some section of ladakh those are like nightmarish kind of scenarios things improved with the bs4 model but now this one with this new avatar of the himalayan and i like to call it a complete transformation of the himalayan range as a whole i feel that the quality is very good and i am communicating the same to you after riding this motorcycle for almost 2 weeks now almost 1000 plus kilometers in different sort of scenarios of course i was not on a complete leave from work that i could ride it like 5000 6000 kilometers <laughs> but 1000 kilometers kind of gives you a great idea of the machine do i feel any sort of rattling anywhere of parts no that is something that i have not experienced even in tough road conditions in off roads as well high speed riding irritating bumpy roads which are not technically off road but those but that irritating patchwork that kind of can get any of the loose parts to come off on a shady sort of a machine that has not happened at all but will that kind of also mean that in the long term it will stay like this that is something that i cannot comment guys how will i be able to comment you tell me that's why i am kind of staying away from answering that question i have not 
ridden this motorcycle for six months seven months i have not done a complete sort of a long 15 16 day ride on the motorcycle so those are the things that will actually get this machine into a situation where if it has to give in in any way if that bad quality has to show up it takes some it takes some time and that's why i think maybe sometime around june or july next year in 2024 or maybe by 2024 end that is when we'll actually get to know about the real issues that are there in terms of the quality of parts and the whole workmanship that has made this new model come to reality so we'll have to wait on that i can't comment and nobody in the world can comment about that from what i understand any motorcycle that goes into production and is then pushed out into market there are loads of quality checks done this time they have followed a totally new uh, approach of of ensuring that the quality remains top notch i am assuming things would be better and that is what i am hoping as well because this motorcycle kind of promises a lot of things and ticks a lot of boxes on the face of it at least let's see how things pan out in the next maybe 12 months or so now you see this trailer man what a beautiful piece of machinery crawling and uh, oh wow now you want to take a left as well and let me now also talk about a very strange question that i have been getting uh, since the time i have been riding the himalayan a lot of people have asked me whether i should get an interceptor 650 or a himalayan for touring guys now this is a little uh, this seems a little obvious to me but i am at the same time a little surprised that people are kind of considering the interceptor 650 and the himalayan in the same sort of a bracket now this is what you call as a typical situation where motorcycles are not very far off in terms of their pricing although the himalayan pricing is still not out it's kind of in the range of maybe a 2.7 or 2.8 lakhs x showroom that is what i expect it to be still it's gonna be a little near to the interceptor 650 i would say dangerously close to cannibalize its sales but for people comparing these two motorcycles just based on the price point or maybe the x factor that the himalayan comes with because interceptor being a classic sort of a machine this one being a little modern with its with the tech that is loaded with it with this new instrument cluster right by wire ability to switch off abs in the rear this is a totally different machine guys i mean you can't compare it to the interceptor in any sort of sense now you may say that interceptor 650 is great for touring but for touring the type of geometry that you need the way you sit on the motorcycle with your feet directly below you you are sitting in an upright manner arms and shoulders elbows relaxed that is something that you will get on the himalayan much 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 better than the interceptor 650 this will turn out to be something that you can munch miles all day long with comfort that is the most important part because in india everyone wants to take their motorcycle and do all sorts of things with it they want to tour on it they want to off-road on it they want to go to ladakh they want to do zanskar they want to do grocery shopping and all that stuff but this is one motorcycle that can do it all pretty comfortably interceptor 650 although it's a twin cylinder has little more power than this feels massively more smoother than this because it's a twin cylinder it still remains to be kind of a motorcycle which is meant for occasional highway riding and uh, in the city sort of a use where you just putter around and enjoy don't compare these two motorcycles that's what i would like to say the feel that you will get while touring on this machine is going to be very different than on the interceptor 650 of course this one also comes in with a lot of options where you can make it a perfect tourer where you can mount all the luggage with the saddlebags top box all that stuff done on an interceptor while that can be done with some stupid accessory makers all making all those options with saddlebags and top boxes for interceptor uh, 
that looks hideous in my personal opinion that looks pathetic on that sort of a beautiful motorcycle it's not meant to you know load luggage that way that's my take on it you guys your call your money your choices do whatever you want but if you really want to do long touring and a motorcycle that can do it all off road on road flexibility grocery shopping in city out of city highway runs two up riding yes two up riding is also one more point uh, i was in the wrong gear two up riding is also one more point where the himalayan will shine the pillion comfort on the interceptor will be pathetic compared to this because this has a flatter seat more cushiony seat where the pillion will be a little more natural in the way it sits uh, they will not have their knees kind of touching their mouth <laughs> which happens on the interceptor seems very idiotic to me but yeah that is where things are if you have to compare these two motorcycles if any of the points that i just mentioned are important to you then go for the himalayan 450 if not then your choice your money your decisions take a call so we have just entered greater noida guys and 1670 kilometers on the odo i got the tank filled up at 1270 so 400 kilometers of range uh, that is something that we have got after after riding in varied conditions going up from dehradun to masuri throttling it out on the highways coming down at crawling speeds i can't calculate the mileage figure as of now because the tank still has some fuel left and let's see how much more it goes i think it will easily go around 60 odd kilometers more the only way to verify this is get a tank full right now till the brim and calculate the amount of fuel that was used so we'll use that method and you will get to see the mileage dalo full kar do full ha yes google pe अब दिखाओ कितना हो गया टॉप तक आ गया पूरा बिल्कुल थोड़ा सा आ गया और उड़ेगा क्या के पूरा टॉप तक आ गया पूरा है अरे अब आ गया आपकी मर्जी हां नहीं पूरा आ गया टॉप तक ठीक है ठीक है कितने का हुआ ये 1673 किलोमीटर्स वी फिल्ड अप एट 1270 सो 403 किलोमीटर्स इन 12.16 प्लस 1 लीटर वाज फिल्ड अर्लियर सो 13.16 लीटर्स पेट्रोल सो लेट्स डू द मैथ uh 400 or i should say 403 kilometers divided by 13.16 liters which gives an average of 30.62 kilometers per liter this is impressive uh why i say that is because we have ridden the motorcycle in different sort of terrains going up from dehradun to masuri coming back crawling speeds highway speeds high speeds low speed full throttle medium throttle 30 liters 30 kilometers per liter is impressive from the new royal enfield himalayan so guys i think now you would have a great idea of how much mileage you can expect from the royal enfield himalayan 450 in a real world ride scenario so 30.6 kilometers per liter on highways fast riding throttling hard easy riding riding up the mountains from dehradun to masuri coming back at crawling speeds all that stuff still it is giving 30.6 kilometers per liter and i think that is a pretty good mileage talking about the tank range uh, we just filled about 13.1 liters of petrol so 3.9 liters of petrol was left approximately 4 liters a 4 into 30 is about uh, 120 so astonishing 510 kilometers of tank range on a 17 liter fuel tank what else do you need i mean this with this sort of a tank range on the royal enfield himalayan uh, there is no route in ladakh that you will have trouble on uh, until unless you are going really into offbeat locations so that is it for this video guys i think i have given you a fair idea on the mileage the cruising speed the vibrations the quality the effectiveness of the windshield and all that stuff in this video i hope you found this video useful if still you have any questions about the royal enfield himalayan please post them in the comment section below and i'll be happy to answer them 
सो दैट इज इट फॉर दिस वन आई विल सी यू गाइज इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो गाइज बाय